Hi, this is Lisa Kelly, Notre Dame author and class of 1993, and you are watching the Two Irish Brothers Show. Cheers and go Irish! How's it going, everyone? I am ND Sean45. I'm Irish Benjamin 57. And together we are the two Irish brothers back with you guys for a brand new episode. Let's spare all the formalities. Let's just dive right in. Now, Ben, we have had a lot of activity going on in the world of college football these past few days. It just such a short amount of time. So let's get right down to the big news. Um, obviously, as we all know, the uh, the Pac the Pac-12 and the Big Ten they have officially announced. And I'm going to choose my words carefully here. They have announced that they are postponing their football seasons and they're looking to possibly play in the spring. Who knows if that's going to happen for sure or not. But I got to ask you, Ben, uh, were you really surprised with uh, with the announcement of either of these conferences uh, backing out of the fall season? In the beginning, um, I was surprised. The Big Ten kind of came out of left field, um, so it was kind of surprising because, I mean, everybody was getting their seasons and their, their schedules perfect. You know, the SEC got their schedule, the ACC got their schedule, the Big Ten got their schedule, the Big 12 set everything up. You know, the Pac-12 didn't surprise me as much as the Big Ten due to the fact that they were kind of sitting, making waves and saying, well, if we don't get this, this, and this – before the football season starts, then we're not having one. Yeah, the Pac-12, they had their little uh, unofficial union, <laughs> right? for lack of so, a better term. So there was that. So like, they didn't surprise me as much, but the Big Ten kind of did a 180 out of left field and was like, nope, we're not doing this no more. So it's, it's interesting, and it's funny. It's funny that now teams in the Big Ten want to become independent for a year, because it suits them. But how much shit did Notre Dame get for being independent for years and years and years and years? So it's, to me, hypocrisy at its finest and it's laughable. Yeah. That, that, that's honestly what it is. I mean, how, and how many times over the years, many times have we heard, oh, oh, you guys are independent. You don't have the rigorous schedule of a conference. You guys have a weak schedule, which I call bull crap on that. Um, you know, you, you're just selfish. You, you can't hang it. You can't hang with anybody in a conference. That's why you're independent. This, that, and the same old crap. Hence, basically, the perfect reference would be when, uh, in 2012, before the season started, when, uh, Mike Golick on the Mike and Mike show, when it was still on, when he tore into, uh, Rick Riley for the article that he wrote that year about how Notre Dame should just give up all the perks that it's been offered. Right. And that's basically Riley was speaking as the Notre Dame hater. That same stuff we had heard long before that. We still hear it to this day. And it's just oh so ironic how all these teams, and granted it's because of a pandemic, they want to become an independent just so they can play. But for decades they've been giving that, that bullshit to us for being an independent. Now they want to become one. Right. Yeah, and... and it's it's funny because Notre Dame can't make anybody happy. Like no matter what they do, they piss people off, which is just hilarious. Because it's like we're independent and people lose their minds over it. And then we join the ACC for a year and people go, "Oh, your schedule just got easier." Which, in my opinion, it didn't get it easier than what we had, you know, than now. Because there are four teams in the top twenty-five from the ACC. Thank you very much to start the season if everything goes to plan. So there's that, you know? Um, so yeah. And then they go, Oh, well, well now we want to become independent after for decades, we've said that Notre Dame shouldn't be independent, you know? And, and people like Desmond Howard, you know, go and say like, well, shame on Nebraska for wanting to play football or shame on Notre Dame for this, this and this. And it's like, dude, okay. First off, it's been, a decade and a half since you've played, so there's that. And you're not on the front line, so you're really not the spokesperson for any of this. So there's that. 
but it's just it's just laughable what these conferences are doing. You know, the Big Ten and the Pac-12. I, I don't really care what they do. I really don't. It's it's a situation where the ACC has said we're playing. You know, and the SEC sounds like they're going to play, and the Big Twelve sounds like they're going to play. So you know what? To hell with the Big Ten. I've slowly lost respect for the Big Ten every year for the last, like, decade. And I think this is, like, the final nail in the coffin for me. You know, it's it, it's laughable what they're doing, and it's shameful. To me, it's shameful. Yeah, and I can't take I can't take the credit for, you know, 100% for these comments because I, because I heard other people say them. You know, I think John from Always Irish said this. Oni Kuno, an, an, an Oklahoma fan that I occasionally watch, he said this. I think even Big Ball Daddy said it, too. But to just, out of nowhere, you know, all of us, we get, we get our schedules introduced, or they, they, they become announced for all the conferences, everybody's so excited, and then all of a sudden, the Big Ten, which I know there's never been a clear answer, but I'll get to that in a second. All of a sudden, they sweep the rug out from under it, and like, I'm in agreement with you on the Pac-12, you know, since they started their uh, unofficial union, but... Everybody's all excited that there's now schedules out that we can look at. And then this happens. And then it, it, you can't help but wonder, too, as, the, as these other guys have pointed out, and myself, I've thought the same thing. Where were, where was the leadership? Right. Where was the leadership? Where were all these athletic directors, school presidents, you name it? Where were they five, six months ago when this stuff with the with the the COVID nineteen and all that when it was take you know starting to take off? Where were they getting together and coming up with a plan A, B, C, D, and so on? Why are they just waiting till a month before kickoff to just make this decision? Yeah, yeah, I I agree. It's it's crazy and. I think they need to let people who are actually involved in it make the decisions, you know, especially for these things that are your big revenue, you know, bring, they bring in the most revenue. I mean, you know, Penn state, Michigan, Ohio state, Michigan state, Purdue, you know, they bring in 90% of your revenue because of the football season. So for you to shut that down, you screw yourself. There's that. Yeah. And then also, you're not speaking for those that are actually on the front line. You know, it, it's it's the same here in the school district that I work in. It's like, I'm going to make a decision for everybody, but I don't really know what goes on. And I don't really know what you're dealing with. And I don't really know how it is. But I'm still going to make that decision for you. And that's how that's what's going on in the Big Ten and the Pac-12. It's, we're going to make decisions even though we've never touched a football in our life, you know? And it's, it's funny because it sounded like a lot of the athletic directors in the football coaches in like the big 10 were against shutting the season down and postponing it. But the presidents of the universities were like, no, we have to do this. Now, I don't know all that for a fact, but from what I've read, that's what it sounded like. And of course, players have taken to Twitter with the hashtag, let us play, you know, and, I mean, not to sound like a hippie or anything, but, I mean, the football players, the kids, should be making that decision. I mean, they're the ones that are dealing with this. They're the ones that are, that are going to go expose themselves to COVID or, or whatever you want to call it. So, I mean, if they're okay with it, well, and the thing is, it's it's ironic that you mention that with you know the kids being exposed to it because I know one of the biggest issues that I read from an article was a uh, I forget how you pronounce the the condition, but there's a, a heart condition that you can get from that's associated with COVID nineteen that can have a uh, life lasting effects because I know it was the Big Ten and their medical committee or whoever that, that did this that came out with this article did the study or whatever. And I'm, but still, it goes back to, all right, if you knew this months ago, why weren't you making plans back then? It's still, it's all into one. So I get it. I get that, that this is this uh, heart condition is not something that anybody wants to have. But at the same time, if the kids want to play, 
let them play. I mean, right. myself personally, this is going to sound harsh, this is going to sound cruel, but we're all going to croak sometime. Right. Hopefully, right. I mean, obviously later, a lot later right. than, than well, you know. I mean, than, and, I mean, statistics don't lie. Okay, I mean, they, they tell you now they can be misconstrued. They can be, you know, used to sway things one way or the other. I get that. But, you know, if you look at it from a non biased point of view, if you look at it, you know, with no blinders on nothing. Okay. The coronavirus has such a high survival rate that what's the big deal? I mean, seriously, what's what's the big deal? You know, and I mean, okay, we're going to say, well, it could have lasting effects. And it could create health problems later on in life. Okay, well, I mean, how many people overeat? How many people drink? How many people smoke? I mean, those are all things that create problems later on in your life. I'm sorry. So, I mean, if that's the basis we're going to go off of, that's bullshit. I'm sorry. That's bullshit. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, I'm not saying I want people to die. I'm not, you know, not at all. But in the grand scheme of things, you know, I... I, I I, I don't get it, you know, and it's a situation where there is no right answer. You're not going to make everybody happy. You're not. No. I mean, whether you say there's a season or where you say there's not a season, you're going to piss off half the people because there are people that believe that this is the end all be all. And if we don't take the necessary precautions, we're all going to die. And then there are the people that totally don't care, you know, and say whatever, you know. So, yeah, it's almost like a damned if you do, damned if you don't type situation. It, 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 it really is. But going back to the Big Ten Pac-12 issue, you're now putting everybody else in an awkward place by doing what you did. Now, I'm not saying what you're doing is unimportant compared to everybody else. I'm not saying that. I'm not putting everybody else above them. But, okay, if, if the Big Ten – or the SEC, the ACC, and um, the Big 12 all say, we're going the whole nine yards, we're doing this, whatever. And then, of course, there'll be a couple of the little conferences, I would assume, that'll that'll stay around. You know, Conference USA, I don't think it's canceled. Just one Nine. program. One program from that con- con- that canceled, and that was Old Dominion. They'll play. So, so what do we do when it comes time for postseason? I mean... Do we say the three power five schools or conferences are the ones that play in the playoff and we have a three game playoff or a three team playoff? I mean, you know, and the big 10 and big and pac 12 are, you know, cut out. Well, since you brought it up, let's just, uh, I was going to wait. I was going to wait till, till later in the, in the episode to do this, but since you brought it up, let's just dive into it right now. And I'm going off of, what we have to work with now for the fall. So, right. 10 FBS conferences overall. Five right. po- five power fives, five group of fives. Mm-hmm. Right now, and actually I got to say this first, I got to give the Big 12 all the credit in the world, all the respect in the world that they finally stood up and took some leadership and made it official that we're playing. And that got everybody else to follow suit. But in re- with with that said, so as it stands right now, we what we have left in, in the the group of the power five has become the power three at the moment. Right. The group of five has become the group of three because the the conferences that are not in the that are I don't know if I'd want to say cancel. We'll say postpone. Yeah. Big Ten, Pac-12, MAC, which we all we we already knew about ahead of time, and then the Mountain West. I think have made it official yes. as well. So that's yeah. the, those are four those are the four conferences that are out. So that leaves right. us with that leaves us with the ACC, the SEC, and the Big Twelve, and the power and the Power Three now. Right. And the group of three is of Conference USA minus Old Dominion, right. um, the American Athletic Conference, and the Sun Belt. Yep. So that le- that make that leaves a. Uh, this is a question that I asked everybody on my channel on a video that I did last night. Um, they seem to have the, just the schedules are just about intact, but we'll start simple. We'll, we'll start simple first. And you might have to help me out with this. Cause I'm not sure 
who all has an open date and who doesn't. Oh. <laughs> and also, we can't forget about the independents that are still out there, too. Because I know um, in the independent pool, I know uh, UConn is done, UMass is done, and I think New Mexico State as well. Yes. So so it sounds like Brigham Young's still going to play, Army's yeah. still going to play. Um, and then and I then th- we're... What? And then we're playing because we're in the ACC. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's why I didn't include us in the independent because we have that conference membership for this year. So right. my first... So my fir- independence, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Unless, yeah. unless a Big Ten becomes independent for the year. Which, which we know that can't happen because I know the Big Ten just laid down uh, some repercussions if any school tries to leave and play in another conference this year. But right. we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Um, so, But anyway, keeping it simple, Ben, who do you think that since we lost, since we lost Navy and there's no chance of that happening because they're, they're going to have to come to Indiana if that does happen, who could you see us playing for the non-conference game since we lost Western Michigan? I would have to look to give, like, the correct answer. But who I could see, um, two teams stand out in my mind. Um, the school that I went to, uh, Western Kentucky could be a big one. Um, they play anybody and everybody. You know, I've seen them play Alabama. I've seen them play LSU. I've seen them play um, USF. You know, Tennessee. I've seen them play. So I mean, they play. They play big name schools. You know, so they're not. They're not a a team that kind of shies away from that. And then UCF, you know, I mean, people don't talk about them as much as they used to after uh, Frost left, but I could see us playing UCF. Now, I don't know if either of those two have an open date where the Western Michigan game was. I don't know. Um, Those would kind of be my big two. Um, Big five, I could see playing Brigham Young in South Bend. Um, I know they'd like to come back and, um, you know, have some uh, have some fun in South Bend or Army. You know, we do we normally play an academy. We're not playing uh, Navy this year, so I can see I can see Army um, being able to schedule us. And we have a little bit of a history with with uh, the Black Knights, so you know, it'd be kind of and it would be cool to see them play in Notre Dame. I would I would take that over not over Navy, but as a consolation, you know, yeah. for the Navy for the season. And, I, and in a video that I made not too long ago, I did, I, when I, when I uh, after we uh, officially lost Navy, and this is before the MAC, the MAC conference canceled and all that, um, I did list Army as a long shot, as a, yeah. as a potential long shot. Honestly, you know, people keep talking about Brigham Young. I don't think that's going to happen because they've already played us two consecutive times in South Bend, and I don't think they're going to want to make it three. So, so I think they're gonna say no because they want that return trip to to Provo. Right. So the the way I've been leaning is kind of what you were saying. Like Western Kentucky, are they in the Conference USA or the Sun Belt? Uh, Conference USA. They started in the Sun Belt and then they moved over to uh, Conference USA. See, because that's um, that's kind of what I've been leaning towards for this for us to replace this. Uh, this non-conference game, if they do end up replacing them, which I'd like to think they would. Yeah, I, I don't think people would like that we have uh, two two open dates, you know, um, on our schedule then, because we were supposed to have, what, one bye week? So, I mean, yeah. you're going to give them two bye weeks? People are going to lose their minds over that one. Yeah, if, if they've already lost their minds over us being independent for all these decades, then, oh. So... <laughs> So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's uh, Conference USA or the American seems like the best bet in my opinion because I could see I could I, I I without looking it up I'd have to look it up and I'm not gonna waste a lot of time on this episode doing that but I could I could I'd like to think that a lot of those teams would have some open dates. Yeah, I I, I think so too. I, I really do. Um, And who knows what these what these Western Kentucky wouldn't happen, unfortunately. I don't think. Oh, you're looking it up right now. Uh, yeah, I just kind of peeked. 
They're playing, uh, well, hold on, that's the 12th. They play Louisville the second week of the season. Yeah, uh, so we're looking, uh, the date we're looking at would be for the 19th. Well, because okay. the season, yeah, the season op- is at home at against Duke um, on the tw- on September twelfth. So they they do have September nineteenth. Though I mean, it, unless Liberty is still have a, having a season because they're an independent, um, Western Kentucky could play Notre Dame the nineteenth. So they are an option. They are. They could be an option. Yeah. And. Um, yeah, again, I'm not sure who else has an open date on the 19th of these conferences, but I think it I think it would either be Conference USA or the American. And who knows, you know, the Big the Big 12. Um, yeah, I would love to play a Big 12 team, but I think they're going to say the same kind of thing that com or that the ACC said. You got to come play us as opposed to us playing, you know, cuz like that's being true. in their um, state or, or a Big 12 state is what I should say. And if Notre Dame has to have that, then they couldn't go um, outside of – unless – no, there's nobody in the Big 12 that's in an ACC state, though. No, they're all uh... – They're all – no. Yeah, I had to think about it for a second. But, yeah, no, there, there's nobody in the Big 12 that's in, the, in an ACC state. So, unfortunately, that wouldn't happen. So, yeah, no, we couldn't play a Big 12 team because I'd love – to play like Texas or Oklahoma, that'd be so fun to play. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> but I agree. So it, it would have to be of the, and and of course, what I failed to mention too is these remaining three group of five schools in the group of three now. I mean, we still have a month yet. They could back down too. They yeah, could. Yeah, they, they could. But they, it's they, but, they but it sounds like they really do want to play. So I'd like yeah. to think that come fall or come next month, we'll have six FBS conferences still. But at this point, I'm just, I'm so really, I mean, that, that's half of, of everything. I mean, that's not terrible. I mean, I'm, re- I'm relying on faith that nobody else backs out. Yeah. Yeah. So, so then what would you, then what do you think would be the end game? Like, would there be a playoff? Would there be, like, what do you think would happen that if, if we have, all those six conferences that you just mentioned. Well, I mean, I, I de- you definitely could still have um, your New Year's Six, no problem. Because here, here's why I say that. It actually, the Big Twelve, or the Big Twelve, the the Big Ten and the Pac Twelve not being there doesn't really affect anything with the uh, the NY Six setup because the Rose Bowl is a part of the semifinals this year, along with the Sugar Bowl. Right. So. You know, it doesn't. So you know that that gar- that guaranteed slot of Big Ten versus Pac-12 that doesn't apply, right? So, and really, the, of the the four games outside the playoffs, they're all at large versus at large, except the Orange Bowl, which is which is SEC versus ACC, and those are two right. conferences that are playing. Right at the moment, yeah, two conferences that are playing. So there's that. And of yeah. course, and of course, uh, one of those games. Which I think it's usually, it's usually the the peach or the cotton that they usually give a spot to the the group of five, the highest ranked group of five. So in this case, right. being the group of three, you could still give one of those slots to the the highest ranked group of three team. And I, I'd like yeah. to think you you could just honestly you could probably just proceed as is. Uh, maybe if they wanted to, you know, the the playoff committee could look at potentially expanding the playoffs, like maybe doing. A six-team playoff, which, you know, kind of like, I mean, I know the NFL is doing it differently this year and adding a seventh team, but they could do that where you have a six-team playoff, the top two seeds get a first-round bye, mm-hmm. and then, you know, seeds uh, three, through, uh, three, three through six, they play uh, in the first round, of course. Right. I don't know if you, I don't know if you use the NY6 Bulls, which I think you could just use that as a – you could use a team stadium for that. Right. So that way, yeah, you're, not, that way just... you're that way you're not cheating teams out of trying to play in a major bowl game. Right. And and you would include every conference then. Yes, you could, you could. You could. You could do that. You, you could do, do a six-team comp – or if you do a six-team playoff, expanded-wise, then you could literally say 
the the representative of the ACC, SEC, Big Twelve, Sun Belt, Conference USA, and American. American. I mean, and it, granted, it would be a very interesting playoff year because we've never See. had a team from the Power Five. Well, and or, and just... Power Five, the uh, uh, group of five, I should say, in the playoffs. And you see, you know, I, I'm I'm starting to feel like a dog slobbering over over seeing a a, a, a a new fresh bone on the ground because that I remember some years ago somebody uh, writing an article with a concept of all um for the for a college football playoff they did a um, they did one where they had all ten FBS conferences plus six at larges. Whoa. Or actually, sixteen teams. Yeah, it was. I that's it was a sixteen team. It was a you know just a, an experimental bracket. Because it's because it's it's always been ten conferences, right, at the FBS level, or was there eleven at one point? Oh, man, you're gonna make me think really hard. I think it's ten. I think. Oh, wait, quote me. wait, no, 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 no. Um, the WAC was still around. Yes. Yeah. So okay. So, so at that point, it, it was eleven conferences. So he, he so this guy took the eleven com- Yeah, he took the the eleven conference winners, five at large bids, seeded them out, and did a, a a tournament. Right. Now and so so, thinking about that when that when I first saw that article years ago, and hearing what you just said about your idea with these six remaining conferences, that could be something exciting because that means. That not just in the the power three, but in the group of three, that could give them all more motivation to play for something, you know? Right. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and it also, you know, to people that are gonna roll, and I know people will roll their eyes at this one, but it gives an opportunity for major upsets too. You know, I mean, a lower seeded Florida State team like beating Alabama. It's shocking, sure, you know, but at the same time, it's a Power 5 school versus a Power 5 school. So, I mean, how shocking can you get, you know? Yeah. But if it were to be a team like like Houston, for example, out of American, you know, that beats Alabama, whoa, you know, or Clemson or whoever, you know, then you're like, holy crap, what just happened? So, I would love to see it. Um I actually kind of talked about my two things, my two, you know, options. Um, I posted a tweet about it. My two is um, you either play a national championship where you would play, um, you would have three teams, okay? Because I'm going off of Power 5, not to exclude the – uh, the, group, the, gr- the group of three? Group, group of three, we should say, group of three. I'm going off of the, the power three. You know, the ACC, the SEC, and the, and the Big 12. So then what you do is you take the two highest, or the highest ranked team or best record, whatever you want to do, okay, gets a first round bye. And then the other two teams, and then they would just be automatically in the national title, and it'd be like kind of like the BCS era, you know, where like you just automatically got in. You didn't play to get in, you you were in. Okay. Then the other two teams that are lower play to get into the national title, and then you play the national title. Or you just have conference championships and you don't even have a national title this year because it's a COVID year. Screw it. You know, I'm not saying those are the right options, but those are the ones that I thought of. Well, I like the first option heck of a lot better because, I mean, no disrespect, Ben. I mean, this is – I'm not saying that's a bad idea. I mean, it's football, and some football is better than none. But it wouldn't. It just wouldn't be right if all you're playing for is a conference championship. You know, there's got to be a, a winner. Yeah. A, yeah. I, I just – I feel like this year in particular, if we do it with a playoff format – Conferences like the Big Ten, the Pac-12 are going to cry and be like, well, we should have gotten an opportunity. You know, well, it's like, well, then you should have played. You know, well, so it's, I mean, it's funny that you mention that because I was reading an article today about with the four conferences that, that postponed their seasons, that there was talk of them possibly uh, awarding a uh, 
basically they're being a co a co national champion for the spring semester. How do you feel about that? That's crap. That is absolute crap. Sorry. Like, yeah, I, I I'm not on board with it either. It's if like you are playing outside of the regular scheduled season. Okay, meaning you're playing in the spring. Not to be like Mister Stuck Up snooty guy but no like you don't know you don't you don't get that that luxury i'm sorry like that's that's how it goes you know if the acc the big 12 the sec the american the um sun belt and conference usa and conference usa all play and we play then we can all fight for the national championship because we're actually playing when the season's supposed to be you know and then you're going to go and play in a different season because you had to take your marbles and go home. No, you're well, not going to be co-national titles. Well, get, well, guess what? When, when COVID really started to take effect and kick in, it was in the springtime earlier this year. So why do they think right. it's going to – what make, what necessarily me, makes them think it's going to be any different in the spring? Plus, plus, if we're going to go that route, okay, if we're going to go co-national champion for those guys in the spring, just give it to freaking Ohio State. I'm sorry. I mean, who, like, who, like, who, who on that side could beat Ohio State? Like, I'm sorry. Like, could Michigan do it? No. Like, um, I, I mean, you expect a, a, a freaking Oregon, team, the the group of two, to beat Ohio State. Ohio State has throttled them. Like, I don't know. I'm sorry. What do you think? You Oregon, of Ohio State losing, going up against an ACC team. Or, or a um, SEC team, and maybe even a Big Twelve team, because they would actually have a firepower to keep up. You know, I could see Oklahoma and Ohio State exchanging blows and having it be like seventy to seventy-three or something. And, you know, but I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of all the teams in the the Pac-12. Um, there was no. I mean, maybe Oregon? Oregon, but even then, I mean, the Pac-12's down too. You know, I, I mean, maybe Southern Cal comes out and shocks the world, but at the same time, I doubt it, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're going to do the whole co-national title in the spring, just give it to Ohio State and call it a day. I mean, like, Yeah, it, yeah. Like, uh, I just – or if you want to do it, um, have the spr- have the spring champion play the fall champion. I don't know. That'd be more – that'd be more – crazy. That'd be more well, – I mean, that'd be more fair. But, I mean, you would – Dude, no. the freaking uh, fall champion would have to wait, like, let's say the season gets over. Oh, three months. November, so it's December, January. And yeah. That's not, even, that's not even playing the season if the spring plays the season. You play 10 games or 12 games or whatever, you're extending out, that'd be like May. Yeah, I know. You so either wait them, you're gonna make them wait till May. As like, far as as far as I'm concerned, you either play now or you don't qualify to play for a national championship. That's exactly right. That is exactly. It's right. probably harsh, probably harsh on my on my part. But and this isn't trying to be have any resentment towards the Big Ten for anything or even the oh, Pac-12. I have lots of resentment towards the Big Ten. So I mean, I'll I'll, well, I'll say that. I'm but just, you don't have to. I mean, <laughs> I I do have resentment towards the Big Ten because of all the crap I've dealt with as a fan from various teams in that conference. But no, like I said earlier, the big 10, all, I mean, like you said, the PAC 12, we kind of saw it coming with their, their formation of a, of a mini union amongst the players, but the big, the big 10 coming out and just sweeping everything under the rug, or, or, or I'm sorry, pulling out the rug all of a sudden and doing a complete 360. Right. So yeah, screw them. Screw them. You either play now or you don't qualify for the national championship. And no, yeah, and I no, and I, and I know everything we're talking about right now, Ben, I guarantee you there's going to be someone that, that poo poos all these ideas or these thoughts. Right. I don't really give two shits about it, but. It's all um, speculation. Yeah. But we don't even, we don't even know for sure what they're going to do right now as far as a uh, postseason and a playoff go. Right. But I, I, I definitely like the uh, idea you gave about the, the six conference champions. Yeah, I mean, if, if you want to make it the most fair, you yeah. know, I mean, if you want to give everybody an equal playing field this year, you know, then so be it. And, and that's fine. I mean, 
will work out. Who knows? You know, I mean, and if well, I don't know. And don't get know? the wrong idea. If they stick with the current model of you know the top four, regardless of conference. I'm still okay with that too. All I'm We're saying is, all I'm saying is there is an opportunity since you have a smaller number of teams now and less conferences, you have a chance to do, uh, do a little experimentation here. And let me tell everybody watching this right now: screw asterisks, none of that crap. Right. You're still playing. You're still earning it, and it's not right. e- it's not going to be easy competition. Well, and and up to this point with the playoff format, okay? It is, we've never had a group of five team in the playoffs, okay? And we've always had one power five school excluded. So, our conference, I mean, you know, it's always either been the ACC, SEC, Pac-12, and Big Ten, or, you know, around, 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 you know, you know, all those different combinations. So, I mean, every conference in the Power Five has played in a playoff format thus far. A team has represented one of those conferences so far. But we have never had all five. And this a- year, this year, if they go with an idea similar to what you came up with, that could actually be a chance to give them an, an idea to see how these um, smaller conferences would compete in the play, in a playoff for right. in, a, in a play in the playoff picture, right. I mean, because because we've we've seen upsets, we've seen upsets with in the major bowl games with them. I mean, UCF doing it against uh, who was it Auburn? Uh, I think Auburn beat them though. They did okay. Well, I thought Central Florida beat somebody big, didn't they? I'm trying to remember them. I know other ones that were like big upsets, and when I say big upsets, I mean. Some of them came down to the wire, but there was still an upset. But, yeah, I don't remember Central Florida. I mean, like, the, the biggest one that stands out in my mind is Boise State over Oklahoma. Well, I'm talking in, I'm talking in the playoff era. Oh, okay. Y- yeah. I, I mean, I mean, yeah, we know about the BCS era, of, of course. But, I'm, but what I, I'm saying is smaller teams can't upset big teams is what I, in postseason play. I mean, look what Utah did against Alabama in the Sugar Bowl. You know, they let a whooping on Alabama. You know, and that's not me being a hater. That's a fact. Like, nobody saw that coming. No. You know, so, I mean, it can happen. But. And, Ben, to answer your question, it was, yeah, it was U, uh, Central Florida. Yeah, over over Auburn in the 2018 Peach Bowl. Okay, they did do it. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, thought, I thought they did. Now, the very next year, they lost to LSU in the Fiesta Bowl. I got you. Okay, that's. I just got the two Tiger teams mixed up. I it's all you. good. It's all yeah. good. Yeah. It has always baffled me that it's only four teams in the in the college football playoff. And the thing that really, really irritates me, and people say, well, they can't play that many games, or they don't have that much time, or whatever. Dude, okay. They play a basketball tournament every freaking year, and guys miss, like, weeks of school for that basketball tournament. Like... You cannot give me that crap over no. the whole, like, they don't have enough time or they can't. Baloney. The excuses have got to end somewhere. I mean, we, all, we, we look, it's already a fact that being a college athlete, that's going to happen. You're going right. to miss time. So it's it's nothing new. Inevitable. It's nothing new. Right. It, it, like I said, for it to be the most fair and awesome, I think it would be awesome to have every freaking conference represented in a playoff. You know, because, I mean, that's what they do in the freaking basketball tournament. Yeah. In every conference is represented. Exactly. In one way, shape, or form. Now, I mean, are there a lot of little teams that get slaughtered? Yes. But are there also big Cinderella stories? Yes. You know, and... You know, people can say what they want, you know, and I, I saw some stuff from other video makers, and I'll, I'll keep their names out of it, but, you know, some people were like, well, Oregon would have slaughtered North Dakota State. You sure about that? I mean, are you sure? Because... They have every, a string every, of beating... Every time, that, every time that North Dakota State has upset somebody, people said, eh, North Dakota State doesn't belong in this game. You know, so... 
you know, it can happen. It, it can really happen. And this would be the year to test it out because what do you got to lose, A, and B, it could be here to stay if you get that a successful run. Yeah, it, if the people, so if the people then, like it. Then, then you can have all, power, all the Power 5 conferences represented with one at large. That would be a lesser conference, like the Sun Belt or Conference USA or the the American Conference or the Mid American Conference. You know, you just don't know when one of the teams gets hot. Yeah. You know, and then you actually get to see if that team that gets really hot in those smaller conferences is really that good. Because I mean, we saw a Boise State team, you know, only lose like two games in a four year span. But were they really that good? You don't know. You know, we've seen a Northern Illinois team go undefeated, but were they really that good? You know, we don't know. You know, so it would be cool to have those questions answered. And and if you're talking about places hurting, you know, lots of places are hurting right now because of Corona. Could you imagine a little school getting into the playoffs and playing against a team like Alabama? Oh yeah, that would. I mean, even if they got slaughtered in the game, that would give that some that area that town that city some uh, inspiration they'd, they'd be happy just to be like okay you know what things suck right now but look what our team just did that right. gives us that gives us something to feel good about gives us some hope moving forward right but um with the postseason though i mean and these are some great freaking ideas i'm loving this discussion right now i mean maybe i'm just hyping us maybe i'm just hyping the two of us up too much because it depends on what you guys the viewers think but um one thing I did say in my video that I did last night, and I don't know what your thoughts are on this, but outside of the playoffs, like I said, the N the, the whole NY6 format, those four other major bowls will be safe. But I could easily see, I could easily see a lot of these smaller bowl games being eliminated. The only, yeah. the only exceptions, the only exceptions being the long-standing ones like the Citrus Bowl. The Gator Bowl, the Holiday Bowl, the Independence Bowl. What you know, ones that are well known, not some www nobody gives a shit dot com bowl. Because of because of what we've talked about many times. I mean and, and, and who's playing in it? You know, who's I mean it's like the Mountain West versus the Sun Belt or the Mountain West versus um the Mac. You know, I, I mean so that's two teams that would be there that aren't even having a season, so how do you have that? You know? Yeah. And so, yeah, I agree. And it sucks. It really does because it used to be we didn't have it, and then now we're used to it, and it's awesome, and we look forward to it, and we have bowl games for like a month and a half, which is awesome, you know, and now we're not because of COVID. So, I yeah. mean, unfortunately, it's the way that the cards are dealt, and it's, it is what it is, you know. Yeah. Um, but – it's a hiatus one year, and then the next year it's back. I mean, well, I, I can, I can tell you one thing, Ben. My overall thought on this whole thing, obviously, and I think, I think we're all on the same page. None of us wanted this to happen. No, none no. of us wanted this. I mean, Who wish pandemic on the world. I mean, if you wish a pandemic on the world, there's something wrong. I'm talking about that. I'm talking about how the how the, the season itself. Like, oh. I, I'm, I, I, what I what I mean is, as much as I despise the Big Ten. It sucks that, that them and the Pac-12 left, you know, postponed their seasons. It sucks that all these other small conferences have left as well. But I got to be honest with you about something. I really hope things proceed as is and that these six remaining conferences stay and play the season. Because I am actually very intrigued to see how all yeah. this is going to go. Yeah. Even, with, even, with us, even with us being in the ACC... Regardless of the circumstances of why we're in the ACC, I am really intrigued to see how this season is going to go as a whole. How Notre Dame will, will do in the ACC? Um, who will we get for that for that non-conference opponent? How will the postseason and the playoffs work? I am in, intrigued by all of this. Yeah. I mean, maybe maybe you guys watching don't feel the same way, but myself, I I am excited to see how yeah. this is going to go. Well, here's something I thought. Of. What if, I mean, it's a very, very long shot. I'm not saying it's going to happen. What if, like, a team like Army plays an independent schedule in this current situation and goes undefeated? Hmm. 
do yeah. you if you have extended playoffs, which is the six, do you exclude Army or Brigham Young? Hmm. Like, Ooh. I mean, it's crazy to think about, and I'm not saying it's going to happen because I mean it's a long, it's a long shot. I get it. I mean, you know, but then that that in that case, that's where you would have to. Um, boy, we didn't think about that, did we? About the independents, because we we just it's it's easy. To, well, and me. well, it's easy to assume that they're all going to join conferences, which is not the case. Right, and they might not. I mean, and it's it's a distinct possibility that they don't. And because everyone was uh, for sure that big Tw- the Big Twelve was going that Brigham Young was heading towards the Big Twelve. That obviously was not going to happen. Right, and, and I mean, granted, well, what, what, it, it wasn't obvious, like, but I mean, yeah, I, and I, I don't know if there's an NCAA rule or not. I don't know. I, I don't know, but I don't know how many road games you can play. Um, because I mean, yeah, I don't know if there's a rule or not. There, there was a year, one year where Nebraska had eight home games. And eight four home road, games? They had eight home games one year. Roads. Because I'm like, I'm thinking about the independent aspect of all this. And it's like, if you are like Army or Brigham Young, and you play a bunch of teams in conferences that say, like, you have to come to us, then how many actual home games do you get? You know? So it's like, could we see an Army team or a Brigham Young team play nine away games? No, they would not let that happen. Like, they would not I mean, let that happen. They the, would be, they would like the big 12 is like, we're in conference only. You have to come to our state. And the sec says we're in conference only. You have to come to our state. You know, those it, teams like Brigham young and army in that case, like, they would have to, they would have to, their schedule would have to consist of mainly ACC, ACC, uh, big 12, I think is, is allowing one non-conference. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So they're looking at, SEC is. What? I don't think the SEC is. No, no, the the SEC is conference only. SEC is conference only, but the Big 12 and ACC are, they do have a plus one. They allow one non-conference game, but like you said, yeah, it has, for the ACC, it has to to be there. I don't, now the Big 12, I don't know if it's the same there, but I would assume it would be. Right. You would Um, think it would be universal, yeah. So, in that case, just, we'll just go with schedule, forget the home and away for a second, but if Army and Brigham Young are going to play an independent schedule, then they're going to be getting a heavy a heavy diet of conference of Power Three and Big Twelve, if it's applicable. Right. So, I don't know. I mean, they I think like to think they would definitely find a way to at the very least balance it out, where they have an equal home number of home and away games. Yeah. But who knows? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's just. Cause there's, cause as far as the, like the gr- the group of three, I know that's weird saying I know, but it, that's just how it is right now. The group of three, I, they, I don't think they have those rules in play, cause they they, they can all, those conferences can all play up to twelve games, as far as I understand. Right. So yeah, yeah. then in that yeah. case, it shouldn't be a problem then for BYU and Army. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, we will see. We will definitely see. But uh. I think people have had enough <laughs> of all of this, so let's move on yeah. and go to the next topic. Yeah, I'm trying to get through all of this, and I'm like, dude, we've had a long discussion about this. But it's been, awesome. gr- yeah, it's been great. Wrong. It is awesome. So, on the recruiting trail, Notre Dame picked up a huge, huge recruit in, in Rocco Spindler. Yes, Spindler. 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 Yeah, Rocco Spindler. I got it up right here. Um, huge, huge, huge victory for Notre Dame. Um, saying that he is literally 30 minutes from Ann Arbor. Like, that is insane. And Michigan was in his, like, final five or whatever. So, um, he took, he took or picked, I should say, picked Notre Dame over Ohio State. It's Ohio State, wasn't it? Um, Ohio State Michigan. was in there, Michigan. Yeah. Michigan, Notre Dame, LSU, and I'm blanking on the final one. There was five, I do believe. 
Oh. Or maybe there was only four. Uh, I remember seeing five hats up there, too. Hmm. But anyway, yeah, pick Notre Dame, and that's a huge thing, and that's a huge pickup, and it's another big lineman, um, no pun intended, um, and you know I'm excited. His announcement was epic. <laughs> um, the promo that he put out, basically for after the announcement, was even more epic. Um, just chills if you haven't seen it and you're a Notre Dame fan, go watch, watch it because just absolutely chills. If you don't get a little choked up, there's something wrong with you, man. I mean, chills totally. Um, but I'm excited. I, 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 I'm really, really, really excited. Um, the cool thing is, and I don't know how much you've seen, Sean, but the cool thing is there are a lot of recruiting going on from guys that are coming in to the program. Like, they're recruiting one another. Yeah. Which is awesome. Like, uh, I had his name, uh, Fisher. Fisher was like, dude, Rocco, you got to come. Like, we got to freaking get this done. We got to, you know. And it's like, I love shit. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, Blake Fisher. Blake Fisher and then... Uh, was it Gabriel Ruby? Uh, Ruben. No. Uh, Gabriel Rubio. Ru- Gabriel Rubio. Yes. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's right. Um, you know, he was doing a lot of recruiting too. So, I mean, you're getting it from guys that actually are on the same level as you. And what I mean, say, what I mean by that is you are getting other high school players that are recruits of the school saying, dude, you need to come here. As opposed to a coach who can make all the false promises in the world, you know, and say like, oh, you would be a great addition to our team and oh, this and that and oh, you know. But they're not in that situation. They're not the kid like... No, these are the guys that they're going to be hanging out with after practice, after a game. No, they aren't the guy that's going to be making the life-changing decision. The life-changing decision is Rocco picking Notre Dame. You know, this is... Whether you pick Notre Dame or Ohio State or LSU or um, Michigan, it's a life-changing decision. You are now, you know, going to a university to not only further your athletic career, but your academic, you know. So guy on the same level, quote-unquote, to say, look, dude, you know, you need to come here and let's go win a national title, that's cool. That's really, really cool. Yeah, and that, that speaks volumes in, in so many levels because, like I said, these are the guys you're playing alongside of. And, and speaking of playing on the field, I mean, talking about Rocco Spindler and in, in just specifically here, six foot four, 315 pounds, and this is an 18-year-old kid. Only I mean, can, can get bigger and can only go up. Yeah, there. I mean, this isn't anything new, but – because you know we see we see the college recruits with these kind this kind of size all the time, but it never ceases to amaze me. Right, and I mean, I wait, mean just wait until you know Notre Dame nutrition and, and fitness gets a hold of them. Oh, I bet he puts yeah. on another twenty pounds of muscle. This, th- this guy's yeah. already this guy's already built like a he's like he's already built like a freaking you know a human RoboCop already. <laughs> right. You right. know. I, I, yeah. Yeah, for I mean, for real, and and that's what makes me really, really happy because, to me, the biggest issue at Notre Dame currently is offensive line play. I don't care what anybody says. Okay, your offensive line makes or breaks your offense. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you are Tom Brady or Tom No Name. You have to have a good line. Because not only does the line open up the passing game, the line opens up the running game. Well, look at how well. I'm glad you said that because look at how well our running game has been these last several years. I mean, it's been exceptional. And maybe last year took a little bit of a step back, but prior to that, I mean, we were seeing Dexter Williams, Josh Adams, freaking CJ CJ Procise having these wide open holes. Yeah, and they were but, off to the races for 80, 90 yards. And where do you think that starts? Yep, at the offensive line. But 
for me, the problem with the offensive line is big games. Okay? You know, we played Clemson, and Clemson was always in Ian Book's face. We played Michigan, and Michigan was always in Ian Book's face. We played Georgia, Georgia was in Ian Book's face. Can't have you, that. You can't have that, especially in a big game. You know, you can have that a little bit in a small, you know, when you're playing a smaller team because you can get away with some stuff. But when you're playing a big name team, you can't get away with that shit. You know, so yeah, we've had we've you know kind of started to take a step forward and all that. But the only place we haven't, which is the most crucial, is against big name teams. You know, and if the guys like Rocco Spindler and um, Blake Fisher are going to be the ones that, that, that change that, you know, because we've had the talent we've had, it. you know, we've seen Mike McGlitchie come through. We've seen the Martin brothers come through. Quentin we've Nelson. Seen Quentin Nelson come through, you know, I mean, we've seen it, but we still haven't taken that next step. Yeah. You know, I mean, and if you want to keep up with times, you know, and I was talking to somebody else about this, Notre Dame hasn't ascended to that level yet. And what I mean by that is we tend to play down to our opponents as opposed to above them. Yeah, I, I've said this many times in videos that I've done in the past, so we are on the same page there. There are a lot of big-name programs that have ascended. You know, LSU has ascended. They freaking put on points no matter who they play. It doesn't matter if they're playing – in Ohio State or an o, or an OK State, they are putting up 55 points. You know, Ohio State puts up 55 points a game. It didn't used to be that way for Ohio State. In Michigan, in Alabama, and LSU, it used to be, you know, they played down to their opponents, and it was a close game, and they eked them out. But now, Ohio State, Alabama, Clemson, who's taking that next step, in LSU, and they're and putting, seen it from Georgia. They're putting games away before it's it, it's even it's started. It's even halftime, right? And you so. can't do that. You have to be there, and we do, we're not there yet. And the offensive line is who gets us there. Well, and the thing is, you know, in regards to that as well, you know, we've <laughs> won, in Brian Kelly's tenure. I mean, we've won some big games in the regular season, but as we all know, and I've said this several times before. We have to ascend and start winning on that big stage in the NY6. I mean, if if it starts with, okay, say we, God forbid, we miss the playoffs. Right. If we can at least win a major bowl game, because it's been way too damn long. The 1994 Cotton Bowl was the last time we won one. We've had chances to to win other ones in that time, and the ones that we have played in. There's been times we've had chances to win it, but. You know, it slipped away or something. You know, we just got throttled. We yeah. got to ascend. We have to ascend to that next yeah. level. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and it's, it is very frustrating being a fan of a team that cannot seem to get it quite all together. You know, and I don't know. You know, I mean... I can't say that it's Brian Kelly. I can't say that it's, you know, whoever. It's just we can't, for whatever reason, get over that hump. So, this, I don't know. Well, all I know is this this current class that we have for the class of 2021, I have it in front of me right now. I'm just breaking it down. I mean, you know, some of these guys, like Tyler Buckner, we knew about already, and then now you add Rocco Spindler to the mix and, you know, Blake Fisher. You know, I mean, obviously, I'm I'm not trying to make these kids sound like they're their household names because they're not yet, but just you know, looking at their stats and their numbers, their size, I mean, it's some good stuff. And one one uh, addition that I haven't really talked about yet, but I'm going to now. Another big one that I think could be very a very big key for us in the future is the signing of Prince Collie, the linebacker out of Tennessee, four star mm. linebacker. I mean, I looked looked this kid up a little little bit from Jonesboro, Tennessee. Um, saw some of his highlights. This kid is all over the place. He he is the definition of a ball hawk. Mm-hmm. So, this has been the year that recruiting has been getting it done. That's for sure. Um, yeah. Really good class coming in. Um, 
and the consistency is there too. And it's also, like you said earlier, filling needs of many key positions that we need to fill. And right. speaking of recruiting though, and this is, this could be the, where we end the video, the, the topic that we end on, um, with, um, with all the conferences that have, the conferences that have backed out for the at least for the fall season, could you see this? Could you see this? Um, could you see the transfer portal going crazy? Yeah, uh, I mean, could I see it? Yes. Will it happen? I don't know. Will the NCAA step in and say, "Look, this isn't going to be a thing"? Probably. Um, they did announce that, you know, kind of in the same realm, they announced that uh, anybody that's sitting out the year due to COVID will be granted an extra year of eligibility. So there's that. Um, so, you know, guys that this could have been their last season and then they, you know, I got to sit out or we're not even playing, you know, they get an extra year of eligibility. So I, I don't know. Um, I think we could see some guys, yeah, because – if there is a postseason announced, you're going to have more exposure now because there aren't as many teams, there aren't as many conferences. So now, whoever's playing, the focus is really on them. Yeah, this you is know? this is actually golden. Op- that's a good point because this is actually a golden opportunity for a lot a lot of guys that you don't see get a lot of that exposure. Because I mean. I don't know if it's the right way of saying it, but I mean, you go where you're noticed. Yeah. Oh, of course. I mean, there are a lot of guys that they pick, you know, they grow up like a Florida state fan and Florida's the in team at the moment. And then they go to Florida, you know, but, and people are like, I can't believe they do that, but you're going to the place that gives you the best opportunity. So now it's, you know, it doesn't matter if you go to Arkansas, if you go to Arkansas, you're going to play Alabama. And if you're going to play Alabama, there's going to be college scouts there. So even if your team sucks ass, you're still going to have exposure because you're playing a big name team like Alabama. So these other guys that are going to be playing at these schools now have a golden opportunity to be like, here I am. Look what I can do. You didn't normally pay attention to me because all this other stuff was going on, but here I am. And here's my state. Yeah, and also it's. It, I'm glad you brought that up too, because I was just thinking, if they, if the Big Ten, Pac-12, Mountain West, and um, MAC decide to proceed with the spring, with a spring schedule, and a spring season, it makes me wonder too. Like, all the guys on on those teams that are um, looking to be drafted into the NFL, do you really think spring ball is a good season or a good idea? Because with the NFL draft taking place in April, what if you play a season? And say a, a, te- a team from the NFL is looking at some some offensive lineman, or take your pick of what position and what school. But say they're looking at somebody from from Iowa, some offensive lineman from Iowa. He goes out in the second game of that spring season, tears his ACL. Right. Well, now that's, that that screws up that screws up not only that kid's future. Granted, he could probably get a medical red shirt anyway, but right. Um, but that screws up his future, changes his plans, and it also cha- it screws up the plans, the draft plans of that NFL team. So, right, because they because because they could draft him, they could draft him, but he wouldn't be ready in time for the season. Not after ter- not after an injury like that. No, heck no. And why would you want to pick somebody like that? I mean, not to be awful, but I mean, you know, nowadays especially, it's not the NFL is not the way it used to be. It, it used to be that they would draft somebody, and it could be a first-round pick, pick, you know, and they eased them in. Now it's, you're playing. Play I now. Mean, you're, you're, you, you know, you're going. They're, they're starting you, you know. So, and the other thing, if you're going to have fall sports like football play in the spring, okay, what goes down in the spring that is another big name athletic event? Uh, March Madness basketball tournament. Yep. So 
we've already had our fill of football because the ACC, SEC, and uh, Big 12 played. And then it's time for basketball. And then you got these guys in states that are basketball dominated. You think anybody's paying attention to the Pac-12 and Big 10? No, probably not. I mean, I'm sorry, you know, but so you're really going to compete with college basketball. I mean, you know, high, now high school football, high school athletics in general, I can see that working in the spring, no well, problem. Well, it's but, a little, it's a lot different. But when you're when it's when this is this is major college competition that's on TV and everybody's looking to get exposure, yeah, that's that's that present a problem. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's all up in the air, man. Yeah. It's, it's easy. So all all I, all I know is just a really a kind of a finishing statement that I have been is, you know. The Pac-12 and the Big Ten, as far as I'm concerned, to hell with them. You want to yep. win a national championship, you play in the fall, you play now. But all I know is I just hope that these remaining six conferences, and I know it, it's an eternity till kickoff where a lot can happen. And as, and as, and as, if we've, as we've seen recently, it happens in such a short amount of time, it's ridiculous. It really is. Oh. But oh, I, just, yeah. I just hope that these six remaining conferences – and, of course, us in with the ACC, of course, I hope they stay together. I hope they make this happen. I hope nobody backs out, especially in the, the smaller conferences there. Because I'm actually, like I said earlier, I'm really excited about what we could potentially see this year. Because this, yeah. this isn't an every year thing. This is a rare thing that's, you know, it's a rare thing that's opened up some possibilities and some a chance to see something different. So... I hope these six remaining conferences keep it together and play some ball. Not just not just so we have something to watch, but just to see the format and the and the the climate, how that goes. Yeah. So, but other, yeah, Ben. Other than that, I don't really have anything else to talk about. I mean, yeah, I could go on forever about Notre, uh, Guinness becoming the official beer of Notre Dame, which is awesome. And I know my and I know Shamrock Jerry probably loves that, which I'll have to con- I'll have to tell him about that if he doesn't know. But <laughs> I got a I got a Guinness bottle in here somewhere, but I don't really feel like getting up to go get it. But yeah, a couple couple beers, beer bottles, I should say, not beers, beer bottles around in this room. But yeah, I have a couple of Guinness glasses from Ireland that Jerry that Jerry stole out of pubs over there. <laughs> well, it, it, he showed me. It, it's ridiculous. It is so easy to steal glasses out of pubs over there. I'm not saying that you could, it couldn't be done here, but just over there, it's so like really nobody's paying attention. Right. I think he, I think the time we I think we he stole like six or seven Guinness glasses while we were over there. <laughs> and he's like and he's like I could easily take steal more, Sean, but I you know we've only got two hands. I've only got two hands here. Right. <laughs> so, but yeah, any any final thoughts from you, Ben, on on any of this? No, just I'm excited about the Guinness partnership. I think that's really cool, and I, I think that'll add to the already rich tradition of Notre Dame. Um, and I look forward to uh, to cracking a Guinness now during every Notre Dame game. That's pretty exciting. It's a good beer. Um, I like not it. Not that I wasn't already kind of doing that, but it gives me more incentive to do that, I should say. Yes. So there's that. Um, but, yeah, I don't got really much anything else. We've covered – as much as we can, I guess, until more things are announced. Yeah, that's. I mean, as far as I know, there were there was nothing new in the news today. I don't think anybody else backed out. Nothing. Nothing. I'll, of course, I'll probably turn on the news after we we uh, get off the get off the air here or get off the video, and they'll probably be like, "Oh, the the conference USA folded or whatever." Right. I hope not. But so yeah, with the so with that said, guys, uh, that's all we have for you. And I'm Andy Sean 45. I'm Irish Benjamin 57. And on that note, everyone, have a great night. God bless and go Irish. <laughs>